go to Google and type Rathod's IAS. Then you can see our website Rathod's IAS Academy. There you have to click on login or register in the blue color. So if you have not registered yet, you have to click on do not have account and fill the details. So after once you have login, click on the courses. There you can see course list. And in this course list, you can see wide range of courses. Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IAS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to discuss current affairs of 6th June 2022. So yesterday prelims is done, right? So how was the paper? So have you gone through the paper? So how was the paper? So the, according to me, the paper here is easy to moderate level because whatever the questions that came in the polity section, they are direct question. And if you have watched our Lakshmi Khan series there, I discussed uh, I discussed more than 70 percentage of Lakshmi Kant. So if you have gone to that videos, yes, easily you can clear all those questions. So I got even personal some message from the students like, yes, ma'am, after watching your lecture, so I am able to answer all those polity questions. So I will be sharing that screenshot in the community as well. And from economy, if you know the concept, okay, if you know the concept, then you can easily answer those economy related questions. And some questions, especially from environment and ecology, will you got 18 questions. So out of that, some questions are really tough from environment session. And SNT also, some unexpected questions that we saw. But from current efforts, mainly contemporary topics. So from contemporary topics, you got questions. So just one year of current efforts is not enough. So at least you have to prepare two years of current efforts, then you can answer those questions. So I will be giving you the list of uh, questions uh, that got in our yesterday's new question paper and most of them. So if you cover our Polity Lakshmi Khan series and if you cover our current FIs Hindu analysis, you can easily get 40 questions correct. So there is evidence. So I will be reading out the list of the questions that appeared. The first one here regarding IMF. So whenever I discussed Sri Lanka, I discussed about IMF. There I made a note about this rapid financing institution. And next one is I discussed number of times regarding inflation. And in last year, June, I discussed about the new e-commerce rules. And also I discussed about this global minimum corporate tax in a separate video. There I discussed about indirect transfers. And I discussed about contempt of court number of times in Hindu analysis. And I discussed about Aishman Digital. And I discussed about elections of deputy speaker. And I came up with a separate video regarding Afghanistan map pointing. There I discussed about countries which are mainly sharing boundary with Afghanistan. And I discussed about Qubit and vaccines of COVID-19. I discussed number of times. And next one is solar flares. Especially in Sunday's newspaper, I discussed about this uh, solar flares. And I discussed about climate action tracker report. According to that, it mainly said that by 20, uh, 2100 year, so there is increasing of 2.4 degrees of uh, warming. Okay, there there you can connect that topic. And next one is I discussed about this Miyawaki, okay, Miyawaki method of uh, afforestation, especially in Telangana state. And I discussed number of times regarding what is this monetary policy of RBI. And I also discussed about uh, recently I said that yes, tea is highly seen in use. So please be prepared regarding this tea. So there was two questions regarding this tea that is a tea board. And next one is which of the following are tea producing states. So and next one is I discussed about Indian credit rating agency number of time. And I discussed about SCO. I said at that time that you can get a question regarding SCO. And I also discussed about AIIB and I discussed number of time regarding price stability and the role of RBI in price stability. And I discussed about fifth schedule in, of Indian constitution. I discussed about environment pollution act of 1986 and I discussed about United Nations General Assembly and I discussed about different types of clouds and also solar park. So largest solar park that mainly seen recently in news and I discussed about unclosed number of times. And even I discussed about Senkaku Islands and, sh and I show the location of the Senkaku Islands as well. And I discussed about Wildlife Protection Act. And I discussed about this Ramanuja, okay, statue. Okay, that is mainly seen near outskirts of Hyderabad. And next one, it is about Somnath Temple. Recently, I discussed about the Somnath Temple. And I discussed about B cells, T cells that is mainly seen in news, uh, especially on Sunday's newspaper. And I discussed about even organization of Turkic states. So apart from that, if you follow our Lakshmikant policy series, so you can easily answer all of those questions for sure.
okay so these are the evidence that i covered almost uh, 40 percentage of this year's upsc prelims and i'm very very happy okay because i did some justice for my work okay so please follow our current fights hindu analysis daily and now let us try to see the today's current fights first let us try to see the quote so quote it is given by ravindranath tagore he says that everything comes to us that belongs to us if we create the capacity to receive it so if we create the capacity to receive it everything which mainly comes to us it mainly belongs to us so first we need to develop the capacity to receive it okay so this is a motivational quote and now let us try to see first topic it is regarding corbevax so here this article which is mainly talking about booster dose so if you're talking about booster dose so we will be having normally two types of this booster dose first one is homologous homologous booster dose and next one is heterologous booster dose so what is homologous actually if you're talking about this covid 19 vaccine so we will be taking two doses of this COVID-19 vaccine. So after taking this two doses of uh, COVID-19 vaccine, so one more dose of vaccine will be given. That dose is called as booster dose. And this booster dose, it may be the vaccine that we already received that are two, same as those two vaccine doses. For example, I got Covishield two vaccines, okay, two doses of vaccine. So after that also I get the booster dose which is again Covishield means that is called as homologous. But I got two doses of this Covishield and third dose I got this Corbivax means it is a heterologous. So this is one important thing that you have to remember regarding this booster dose. So why here this Corbivax is in use? So here this Corbivax got approval from this drug controller general of India. So in yesterday's lecture we studied about introduction. Right, I showed you article regarding this Corbivax in the first page. So here drugs control general of India which mainly gave a nod for this booster dose for this Corbivax and it is a heterologous booster dose. So because of this, this is in news. And now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. Actually in yesterday's paper, there is one question regarding this COVID-19 vaccine. Sputnik is there and Covishield is there. actually this Covishield is a vector based vaccine not mRNA based vaccine so because of this you need to know the nature of this Corbivax as well that might be important from your prelims point of view so if you are talking about context it mainly says that DGCI drug controller general of India which is an Indian drug regulator which mainly gave a green signal for this Corbivax as a booster dose and this dose can be given to adults who are above 18 years of age and who already received two doses of vaccine that is either Covaxin or Covishield. Okay, so it is a heterologous booster shot. So though booster shots have been administered since January 10, okay, we came up with this giving of booster dose especially for healthcare professionals, frontline workers and people who are over 60 years of age with the comorbidities. With the comorbidities means you are having other diseases like hypertension, lung disease, liver disease, kidney disease, etc. So India has been using the same vaccine for both primary vaccination and as well as booster dose. But now we came up with this heterologous booster dose. So recently clinical trials which are mainly done. So in this clinical trials they mainly found that. So booster dose using vaccine is that whenever we are taking the different one. Okay used for the primary vaccination that is for the two doses of the vaccine. Okay, and this is called as heterologous boosting and recent clinical trials they mainly found that whenever we are going for this heterologous boosting that will be having more okay that will be having more or higher immune response. So recently one trial which is mainly done by this Christian Medical College Vellore it also found the same result. So whenever they use this heterologous booster dose this uh, higher immune response which is mainly seen. So if you're talking about some facts regarding this Corbivax, it is a country's first receptor binding domain protein subunit vaccine. So it is mainly belongs to protein subunit platform and it mainly indigenously developed against this COVID-19. And if you're talking about route of administration, it will be given to intramuscular route and it can be given in the two doses uh, and the time gap should be there between the two doses here is 28 days 
and this waxing jacket may store at a temperature between 2 to 8 degrees centigrade so if we talk about booster shot so booster shot means the strengthening of it is mainly focusing on the strengthening of immune system against particular pathogen so it might be exactly same uh, as original vaccine that we take or even sometimes it is different that is called as heterologous booster okay so this booster dose which is mainly focusing to protect people from a new variant and these booster shots they will be given only for the people who got fully vaccinated and now let's try to see next topic it is regarding fishing cat so world's first fishing cat census done in chilika so this article is important from your gs paper 3 under environment and ecology so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so in chilika lake we came up with asia's uh, it is a one of the asia's largest brackish water lagoon so what is this lagoon so let me know okay what is this lagoon for example if you see this is the coast and this is a sea water so what happened whenever there is a lake which is present and it is enclosed enclosed by land it is not having any opening with the sea that is called as a lagoon okay so here the chilika lake chilika lake it is a largest brackish water lagoon it has it has 176 fishing cats according to census done by this chilika development authority so cda came up with a with a counting okay with uh, with a counting of this number of fishing cats in that chilika lake so there are about 176 fishing cats they are mainly based on the census which is done by this chilika development authority and it mainly came up with collaboration with the fishing cat project so if you see details of this study which mainly says that so this is the one of the world's first population estimation of this fishing cat that mainly done outside the pro protected area network so what is this protected area network let me know in the comment box so it's the world's first population estimation of fishing cat done outside the protected area network and according to this chilika development authority they came up with these two phases of this uh, census so first phase of this census which is mainly conducted in 2021 that mainly done in about 115 square kilometers okay and phase two of this census which is mainly done in 2022 and a total of about 150 camera traps they were deployed in the two phases and if you're talking about important role which is mainly played by the community here is so community they also participated here so here this article says that community spirit is very important and participatory in participatory spirit okay participatory spirit here so in this uh, participation local fishermen and villagers of chilika they were primarily participated in this exercise and without their support the world's uh, fish fish cat okay fish cat population estimation outside the protected area on this globally threatened cat would not have been possible so here participation of community is also very very important and next one is if you're talking about wetlands in asia they are being lost at alarming rapid rates and proper data on their current status or even baseline data is missing so in india if you're talking about data regarding this wetlands it is also missing so actually there is one question regarding this wetlands so this question was framed in a very nice manner that if you're talking about a forest equatorial forest they are called as lungs of uh, our earth so here wetlands are called as kidneys so what are the what is the meaning of that kidney actually this wetlands they will be absorbing high amount of uh, heavy metals and even nutrients okay so because of this this wetlands are also called as kidneys kidneys of our earth okay so in this way here you have to know what is the ecological importance of wetlands as well and you have to open the map and you have to see where wetlands are located in india and what are the functions of this wetlands so this will be very important and the status of many wetland species remains understudied and highly threatened tracking specialist species such as fishing cat gives us an indication of what might be happening to these ecosystems which are safeguards against the climate change and droughts okay so we need to have a data regarding regarding the uh, data of this wetlands because it is very very important because this wetlands they will be also serving many ecological services and 
they are also having some threats from this climate change and as well as droughts etc so this is the image of that fishing cat so recently i visited this nehru geological park and there i came across this fishing uh, cat and it is like a cub of tiger so if you are talking about some facts regarding this fishing cat it, the size of this cat it is twice as a house cat and this fishing cat is a nocturnal means it will be active at night and apart from fish it is also taking the food like frogs crustaceans snakes birds uh, scavenge it also scavenges on carcasses of higher animals etc and these species one specialty here is it will breed all around the year and they spend most of their lives in the dense vegetation and they live close to water bodies and as well as they are excellent swimmers as well and if you are talking about habitat in india they mainly found in mangrove forest of uh, sundarbans and even food hills of himalayas uh, himalayas and even ganga and brahmaputra river valley western ghats and chilika lake so these areas we can see this fishing cat so if we are talking about what are the threats which are mainly faced by this fishing cat first one is habitat destruction so major threat for this fishing cat is the destruction of habitat and next one is shrimp farming so shrimp farming is another growing threat to mangrove habitats of fishing cat and if you are talking about hunting so this is this unique cat also faces threats from hunting for meat and skin and next one is ritual practices so tribal hunters they indulge in ritual hunting practices throughout the year and they are also facing threat from poaching occasionally they will be also poached for skin and poisoning so indiscriminate trapping snaring and poisoning is also one of the important threat which is mainly faced by this fishing cat so if you're focusing on the protection status in iucn red list they are listed as vulnerable okay so actually this fishing cat also recently downlisted to vulnerable to endangered in iucn red list you have to update this and if you are talking about sites they are listed under appendix 2 and under indian wildlife protection act of 1972 they are mainly protected under schedule 1 and if you are talking about location of chilika lake here we have this chilika lake and here we have this bay of bengal so if you are talking about if you are talking about this facts regarding this chilika lake chilika lake it is asia's largest and world's second largest lagoon and in 1981, this Chilika Lake was designated as the first Indian wetland of international importance under this Ramsar Convention. And it and we can see this Chilika Lake, it is famous for this Irrawaddy dolphins. And we can see Nalabala Island, okay. And there we can see wide range of birds which are who are, which are mainly coming from different countries. And and it also declared as a bird sanctuary in 1987. And next one is Kali Jai Temple. So Kali Jai Temple, which mainly located on an island in Chilika Lake, and this Chilika Lake, which mainly hosts the birds which are migrating from thousands of miles away from this Caspian Sea Lake, Baikal, Aral Sea, and remote parts of Russia, okay, Mongolia, Central, South, East Asia, Ladakh, etc. And now let's try to say next topic is regarding ethanol blending. So recently I discussed about this ethanol blending topic, and once again let us have a discussion. So this topic is important from your environment and ecology point of view. So 10 percentage of ethanol blending gold met says our prime minister. Our prime minister says that yes we achieve 10 percentage of our ethanol blending. So now let us try to understand this topic in a very great detail. So if you see context it mainly says that India has achieved a target of 10 percentage of ethanol blending in petrol. So in petrol we came up with blending of 10 percentage of ethanol okay so five months ahead of schedule so this is the thing which mainly said by our prime minister so if you see details he already said that so because of this 10 percentage of ethanol blending that mainly reduce the carbon emissions okay and because whenever we are using this ethanol that will lead to complete burning of fuel and next one is it also saved foreign exchange reserves of worth of a dollar 41,000 crore okay rupees 41,000 crore and next one is so because of uh, production of ethanol it also led to increasing of income of farmers it is like rupees 40,600 crore in the past eight years because of increasing of ethanol blending so what are the advantages of this ethanol blending the first one is it mainly decreases the emissions and also saves our forex reserves and it also increases the farmers income so last june our prime minister he also made a statement that so we came up with a roadmap for ethanol 
ethanol blending in India and it is like 20 percentage of ethanol blending and target here is 2025 to 2026. So 10 percentage of ethanol blending is target which means achieved in that is to be achieved in November 2022 and ahead itself we achieved this target. So if you see this infography which is mainly talking about national biofuel policy 2018. So this national biofuel policy is also saying that we need to achieve 20 percentage of ethanol blending in petrol by 2030. So what will be the advantages if you are going for ethanol blending? So it mainly reduces our import dependency on this crude oil. So we can save our forex reserves. And this one is we are also having some health benefits by encouraging uh, by encouraging this ethanol blending here is utilization of used cooking oil as feed feedstock for production of biodiesel so whatever the amount which we are going for the waste that can be used for production of this biodiesel and we can go for waste to wealth okay agriculture forestry and municipality solid waste etc and next one is so when we are focusing on this ethanol blending that will also leads to employment generation okay so employment generation through bio refineries plant operations village level entrepreneurship supply and uh, supply chain management so in all these areas we can increase employment opportunities and next one is environmental friendly fuel so this ethanol blending so it will leads to complete combustion of fuel so that it will be environmentally friendly fuel and it will be also helpful for our cleaner environment and next one is Infrastructure investment in rural areas through setting up of 2G bio refineries. Okay, so it will be helpful for going for this uh, bio refineries as well. And this one is it will be also creating some additional income for farmers so that we can achieve the target of doubling of farmers' income. Okay, so these are some advantages of this ethanol blending. And next, if you see the steps which are mainly involved in the production of ethanol as a fuel so first we are getting some sugar cane and we are going for fermentation and later on we are going for purification finally we are getting ethanol and this ethanol we are mixing with the petrol and this ethanol blended petrol which mainly transported to petrol stations and from here we are supplying this ethanol blended petrol to the vehicles so if you're talking about some facts regarding this ethanol so ethanol it is a one of the principal biofuels and this ethanol which is naturally produced by fermentation of sugars and this fermentation which is mainly done by yeast so actually regarding this yeast also there is one question yesterday's uh, question paper regarding probiotics probiotics contains bacteria and as well as yeast so many students they confused with this and ethanol blending program it is mainly aimed for reducing of countries dependence on crude oil imports and even we are focusing on decreasing of carbon emissions and to boost farmer income as well and if you are talking about target of this blending so government of india which has advanced target of 20 percentage of ethanol blending in petrol okay and the target here is 2025 to 2030 so there was one question 2020 regarding this national biofuel policy okay according to india's national policy on biofuels which of the following can be used as a raw materials for production of biofuels cassava damaged wheat grains groundnut seeds horse gram rotten potatoes and sugar beet so here you have to select the correct code so actually under this uh, policy which mainly said that your sugar containing material like a uh, sugar beet a sweet sorghum starch and sometimes we can also get starch from corn cassava and damaged food grains like wheat broken rice rotten potatoes and which are unfit for human consumption they can use for ethanol production skirt option will be yes cassava damaged wheat grains rotten potatoes and sugar beet so one two five six option a is correct answer and next topic is regarding EVTOL. Okay, the status of EVTOL as soon to be reality. So this article is important from your science and technology. Okay, so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So recently, why it is in use? Our union, our union civil aviation minister, our union civil aviation minister has said the government of India exploring the possibility of inviting manufacturers of this electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft to set up base in India. So we are mainly focusing on to set up of a base that is electric vertical takeoff and landing base in India. So here in this context, your Union Civil Aviation Minister 
had been on visit to US and Canada in April and they came up with interaction with the key players in the industry and they said that they are going to set up bases in India. So because of this, so this electric vertical takeoff and landing, it is going to be reality in India. So now let us try to understand what is this EVTOL electric, okay, that is electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. So here this aircraft which is mainly going to use electric power to hover and to take off and to land vertically. And if you're talking about this technology which has grown an account of success in success which is mainly seen in electric, electric, electric propulsions. Okay, so here we are mainly came with progressing with the motor, battery, fuel cell and electronic controller technologies. And if you're talking about the global market of this electric takeoff and landing, so it mainly like dollar eight point five million in twenty twenty one, and is going to grow to dollar thirty point eight million by twenty thirty, and the demand will be on will will be on account on green energy and noise free aircraft, cargo carrying concepts etc. So if you see this image, then you can understand this technology. So we will be having peace of mind, like fifth generation award winning fly by wire system that is located here. And we will be having community friendly 100% electric and no noise footprint here. And we have the design for all. So we are having universal cabin. Okay, that can be easily accessed to everyone. And here you have bridge, uh, a bridge to the future that is ready for future autonomous operation that is seen here. And here we have simple and intuitive that is smart use of technology and reliable solutions that is mainly seen here. So this is the image. Okay. So this is the image. And now let us try to see some facts regarding this electric vertical takeoff and landing uh, aircraft which mainly stands for E electric VTOL that is vertical takeoff and landing. So it is a transport aircraft which mainly uses electric power to hover to take off and to land vertically. Actually it is a low altitude urban air mobility aircraft so it is having capability to carry very few passengers and it is having six seaters and as well as eight seaters okay and they are mainly powered by using batteries and some also will use hydrogen fuel cells and if you're talking about applications so air taxi delivery and even medical assistance recreation we can use this and recently even Israel which also came up with setting up a field scale prototype and that can be used for the personal flying car as well. And if you to, if you see the benefits of this electric uh, thing, so it will be greener, it will be faster, quieter and vastly cheaper than helicopters. And now let us try to see next topic it is regarding project to track small fishing vessels pending since 26 by 11. Actually, this 26 by 11 is also called as 2008 Mumbai terror attacks. So actually, a terrorist from this uh, Islam, uh, from this Islamic uh, terrorist organization of Pakistan and even elite Lashkari Taiba, there are about 10 to 15 members, they entered India through sea route, okay, and they started attacking, okay, they started a bomb blasts and as well as shooting for the four days, okay. So this was the event that happened in November 2008. So here this article says that project to track small fishing vessels pending since 26 by 11 and this topic is important from your GS paper 3 under defense and security and it will be also important from this uh, GS paper 2 under international relations because we are going to talk about the role of quad. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail. So if you see context it mainly says that as squad grouping looks to track and to address illegal unreported and unregulated fishing illegal unreported and unregulated fishing in indo-pacific region and they want an um, they need to come up with an ambitious uh, ambitious effort to install satellite based vehicle monitoring system they want to come up with satellite based vehicle monitoring system and this can be used for this uh, small fishing vessels so because of this this is the news so if you're talking about status in india so we came up with pilot studies being conducted regarding this installation of this vehicle monitoring system for the smaller vessels okay because of uh, aftermath of this 2008 mumbai terror attacks that remains stuck so this is the thing which mainly said by government officials and they came up with tracking of uh, small fishing vessels and it is something which is pending since this 26 by 11 
okay so why what are the reasons the reason here is the fishermen they do not want to get tagged their ship with this vehicle monitoring system because they do not want their illegal activities to be recorded and next one is if you're talking about fishing it mainly comes in the state subject so there are local politics which are mainly involved so because of these two reasons so here tracking of the smaller fishing vessels it is pending in india since 2008 so if you're talking about some more important details it mainly says that there is no legislation to force fishermen to install these transponders and efforts by the ministry of fisheries okay there is no proper legislation which is also there to force this fishermen so if you're talking about what is quad initiative so quad initiative which is mainly contains four countries like india us japan and australia so these are the four countries which are part of this quad initiative and they may announce that last month they are going they came up with this ambitious indo-pacific maritime domain awareness initiative so in, under this indo-pacific maritime domain awareness initiative they are coming up with dark uh, tracking of dark shipping and they want to build faster wider and more accurate maritime picture okay and the critical regions in this indo-pacific region they are implementing this is pacific islands southeast asia indian ocean region so actually there are two regulations which are mainly present globally regarding this unintended okay regarding this iuu fishing here uh, the first important agreement here is a cape town agreement and next one is agreement on ports state okay Ag agreement on ports state and next one is cape town agreement so for these two regulations so india it is not signatory to both of these agreements so you have to remember this for sure and if you're talking about bigger ship yes for bigger ship we have this automatic indication system identification system so we have automatic identification system for the bigger ships so which made compulsory for all the vessels about 20 meters after this 2008 mumbai at mumbai terror attacks okay so after this 2008 mumbai terror attacks they mainly set and made compulsory that for all the bigger ships they need to have this automatic identification system and the trails they were conducted in association with indian space research organization okay and they mainly focused on communication satellite transponders etc so if you're talking about iuu fishing so what are the some concerns so concerns here is so whenever we are going for unintended illegal unregulated fishing means that will lead to depletion of the fish resources which are present and it will also destroy the marine uh, habitats and it also puts fishermen at disadvantages at the longer run and it mainly impacts even coastal communities especially in the developing countries so even if you're talking about fishermen so we are also having some issues regarding subsidies of government so there is issues of subsidies of uh, government for fishermen so it is believed that whenever there is a more subsidies are given then it will be like a more illegal fishing that can be seen okay and because of this we need to go for a campaign across the world against the subsidies so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic title says rivers facing heavy pollution so it is according to CSE report so this article is important from your environment and ecology which mainly comes from the GS paper 3 and now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so if you see the context it mainly says that three out of four rivers three out of four rivers monitoring stations in india they mainly posted that there is high level or alarming level of heavy toxic metals for example lead iron nickel cadmium arsenic chromium and as well as copper in the river water and it is about fourth out of the stations they spread across 117 rivers and tributaries they have the high levels of two or more toxic metals they were reported and if you see some details it mainly says that out of 33 monitoring stations of ganga so out of this 33 10 had high levels of contaminants and if you're talking about some more details here so actually this river ganga which is under the center's namami gange mission so in this river ganga if it is having high levels of lead iron nickel cadmium and arsenic so it is a thing which mainly said by here state of environment report 2022 and in india we have about 764 river quality management or monitoring stations so across 28 states we have about 
764 quality monitoring stations. So out of this, here Central Water Commission which mainly tested water samples from 688 stations for heavy metals between August 2018 okay, and December 2020. So out of this, 588 quarter quality stations they monitored for pollution. So to they are having total coliform and even BOD biological oxygen demand is high in these areas. So because of this, we can say we have very poor, okay, poor or waste water, uh, which is mainly seen. And most of the times, your waste water treatment from industry, agriculture, domestic households, they will be released without treatment. So India dumps about. 72 percentage of the sewage without treatment and 10 states do not treat their sewage at all. So this is the thing which is mainly according to the central board, okay, central pollution control board, CPCB. So if we are talking about this article which also made a note on uh, even coastline erosion. So what is a coastline? So India which is having a very large coastline. So it is a, uh, if you are talking about this coastline erosion over the one third, over the one third of India's coastland which has spread across 6,907 kilometers, they saw some degree of erosion. Okay, they saw some degree of erosion that is between 1990s and 2018. And West Bengal which is the one of the worst hit over them. Okay, West Bengal state which is having the one of the worst hit because of this coastland erosion. And what are the reasons for this coastland erosion? There is increased frequency of cyclones, there is increased sea level rise and there is also the construction activities that are mainly seen at harbors and beach mining and building of dams. So these are some important reasons for this coastal erosion. Okay, the first one is increasing of cyclones and sea level rise and construction of harbors and beach mining and as well as building of dams. So, we are talking about some facts regarding this Central Pollution Control Board that is CPCB. So, this CPCB of India is a statutory organization. It is a statutory organization which mainly comes under Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and mainly established in 1974 under Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act of 1974. And this CPCB which also entrusted with the powers, okay, which mainly comes under the Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act of 1981. So if you are talking about some facts regarding this BOD, biochemical oxygen demand, it is also called as biological oxygen demand. So it is nothing but the amount of dissolved oxygen that is mainly required for aerobic bacteria which is mainly present in the water to break down this organic material which is present in the given sample of water. So whenever there is increased amount of this organic waste means the demand of oxygen will be high. So whenever BOD is high means we can see it is a like highly polluted water. Okay. And BOD value is most commonly expressed in milligrams of oxygen consumed per liter of sample during the 5 days of incubation at 20 degrees centigrade. And this BOD can be used as a gauge, okay, gauge of the effectiveness of waste water plants. And now let's try to say next topic, it is uh, regarding China marks new space milestone. So here we need to know about this Tiangong space station of China. So this article is important from your GS paper 3 under science and technology. So now let's try to see this topic in a very great detail. So if you say context, it mainly says that Three Chinese astronauts, they docked at the country space station on Sunday. Okay, they came up with this country space station. And here, it, this mainly marks a new milestone in Beijing's drive to become a major space power. So, if you see details, it mainly says that. So, three, three astronauts, they went to this Chinese space, uh, space station in a long march to a rocket. And the team which is mainly tasked with completing in orbit assembly and the construction of space station and they also came up with commissioning of equipment and conducting scientific experiments also. And the spacecraft which mainly docked at this Tiangong station after about 7 hours of flight. Okay, after 7 hours of flight. So they also docked the spacecraft at this station. So Tiangong which mainly means heavenly palace 
which mainly expected to become fully operational by the end of the year. And China's heavily promoted space program has already seen nations land rover on Mars and even it also sent some probes to moon as well. So we're talking about some facts regarding this Tiangong station. So it is a new multi-module Tiangong station which is mainly said to be operational for at least 10 years. And the space station will operate in low earth orbit and the altitude here is 340 to 450 kilometers from our earth surface. And what is significance? So the low orbit space station that would be the country's eye from the sky and it will provide bird's eye view of astronauts for its astronauts and even for the rest of the world. Okay, so in this way here it is mainly focusing that it should become a major space power by 2030. And I want to give you one main question here that is write a note on International Space Station and ask should not be more than 150 words. So now let us try to see yesterday's Prince questions. The first question is regarding Article 263. It mainly talks about Interstate Council. So first statement here is it was set up on the based on recommendations of Sarkaria Commission. And the President is authorized to set up the Council based on interest of public. And Prime Minister is the Chairman of this Council. Yes, all these three statements are correct. So correct option is 4. And next question, it is regarding federal spirit. So which of the following trends in working of the political system which reflects the federal spirit? The first one is discussions over goods and services tax, yes. And issue of other cards, issue of other cards will not come to the federal. Next one is emergence of regional political parties, yes. Our Land Acquisition Act, no. And arbitrary removal of governor by president, no. So correct answer is 1 and 3. That is option 2 is correct answer. And today's questions are the first one, it is regarding constitution of India. Okay, and next one here is the question on national emergency. So please try to read the statements and give me the correct option in the comment box. So before saying this, today's Hindu newspaper PDF, I want to make a small announcement. We in Rathod Science, we came up with this mains answer writing practice. The students who got the less marks, who are getting a question, number of questions which are less. So the cutoff will be, one thing I want to make a note here is, so cutoff will be same as compared to that of last year. So here uh, the exam paper difficulty is moderate level. So here if you are getting 90 plus marks means you will be in a safe side. So if you are getting 90 marks, more than 90 marks means yes, you can start your preparation for your mains. And if you are getting marks which is less than 85, 85 to 87 means. So please again try to prepare from first. So there is no choice, right? So for the students, uh, please try to join this uh, mains answer writing practice. So this will be very helpful to focus, uh, okay, to focus on your studies. And uh, the course here is, it is a one year course and we are going to complete GS1 to GS4, GS1, 2, 3, 4. In this uh, course, we are going to give you daily one mains question and as well as model answer. There will be evaluation, one to one mentorship. Okay, the cost of this mains answer writing practice is 7,200 rupees for one year. So this will be highly beneficial. And you can trust our academy. And next one is we also came up with a foundational course where we are focusing on this conceptual clarity. Okay, so in this foundational course, we are going to provide more than 600 hours of uh, video classes and the validity of this course is two years. And if you want to take single module like only economy, history, geography like that, you can take the single modules as well. So these courses are very, very useful. And if you have any doubts regarding these courses, please call me on this number. 8074765513 okay and this is also whatsapp number you can also message me on this number and if you want to watch the demo videos you can visit our website rathodsiasacademy.com there you can watch three demo videos without paying a single penny so after video, watching those videos also only you can go for purchasing of course and now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf so this is our Hindu date here is June 6th and this is Delhi edition. So first article it is regarding one disaster I can say. That is 25 pilgrims they killed as bus falls into Georgian Uttarakhand. Okay so there are 25 pilgrims from Madhya Pradesh they were killed and there are critically three people they are critically injured. Uh, as this bus which mainly fell into deep George. They are mainly going to Emnothri temple in Uttar Kasha district of Uttar, Uttarakhand. And next topic is again 10 percentage of blending of ethanol. I discuss this topic. I discuss this topic regarding fishing catch census. And leave all these pages. It is not much useful. 
and if you come to this page number 6 in editorial page there is one article which is important regarding india us relations so you can read this article okay apart from that there is one article regarding this corbevax i discussed this topic and in this opaid page page number 7 you can see one article which is regarding counterfeiting the counterfeiting means nothing but fake currency so counterfeiting which is mainly getting away with it okay so in financial 2022 the number of counterfeit of this 500 rupees notes doubled about 80000 from the previous year and there was also significant increase in the fake 2000 rupees notes also and the west bengal recorded with the highest number of cases which are related to this counterfeit notes and next state here is uttar pradesh and next one is assam okay so we have to see where your state stands and this text and context i discussed regarding this electric uh, okay electric uh, vtol that is electric vertical takeoff and landing and if you move forward in this 10th page there is uh, there is one article regarding this projected to track small fishing vessel spending since 26 by 11 i discussed this topic and there is also one article regarding this bima koregon so actually this, every year we can see this bima koregon will be in news so you have to refer that what is this bima koregon issue and in this 12th page you will be having number of articles regarding this reverse facing heavy pollution i discussed this report and next one is pm calls for protection of soil health so here we have to refer some facts regarding this soil health card so this is your homework students and next topic it is regarding coal shortage so because of highly uh, coal which is seen in news so we got a question regarding coal okay coal uh, coal control organization i think so so there was one question it is also one unexpected question and next topic here you can see one ethical issue tamil nadu dms team begins probes to uh, into girl being forced to sell old sites so old sites it is nothing but the eggs okay so especially uh, whenever there is infertility that is seen so recently because of uh, changing in the lifestyle of people that led to increasing of infertility right in the women uh, at that time when we want to go for uh, uh, go for ivf or tissue called tissue baby so we need eggs so if there is no eggs in the woman mean they need to go for the eggs that can be taken from the donors so those are called as oocytes so what are the ethical issues which are involved in this so you have to learn about them and in this 13th page you can see north korea test fire salvo of mis missiles so this is very important and next one is uh, pakistan set to raise defense spending by six percentage so pakistan armed forces are likely to be allotted dollar 7.6 billion in the budget of the in the next fiscal year actually they uh, increased amount that can be consumed mostly by allocation for employees and employees related expenses salaries and as well as allowances of the servicemen and i discussed about this china marks new space milestone so these are the some important articles that appear in our today's hindu newspaper i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathod's is academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos and please join the courses and the details of this course are given in description box thank you so much go to google and type rathod's is then you can see our website Rathor Science Academy. There you have to click on login or register in the blue color. So if you have not registered yet, you have to click on do not have account and fill the details. You have to give your name, email ID, your mobile number and password. And finally, you can click on this register button. And once your details are filled, then registration will be successful and click on OK and come back and click again on login and register and you have to log in now so after once you have login click on the courses there you can see course list and in this course list you can see wide range of courses so you can see indian his indian society is he sat at the international relations essay and if you buy all the courses then we will be giving access to all these courses like history economy geography and this is our main answer writing course there you can see different batches are there and this is our prelims test series if you want to watch demo videos you have to click on play course and in history we will be having five modules so there if you want to see demo videos in that so and so part of history you can click on that play course 
and before payment you can see only three demo videos and after payment you can see all the videos will be displayed on the screen you will Hello be students. having Welcome settings regarding Chinese. quality and My also speed you can adjust faculty. according to Today your the requirement of the world history lectures the most this important topic history. in the world history of the upsc and csc exam that is the french next, revolution let us try to see other subject international relations click on play codes and the same thing that will follows before payment three demo videos after payment every video will be displayed on screen and you can click on the play button then full screen and then settings so this will be follows to all hello all welcome courses. to the lecture a very important topic we are going to cover up in today's lecture that is indo pacific every day in newspaper we are hearing this word indo pacific region and the important this is regarding polity and the faculty is shashwat rago ma'am hello and welcome everyone to rat horse is this is shashwat raghav your polity faculty on this platform we'll be basically covering our gs paper 2 and we very well know in gs paper 2 we have governance constitution polity along with social justice and ir by me your constitution polity and governance subjects will be covered in gs in upsc site for gs paper 2 only the subjects have been mentioned the governance constitution polity but faculties this is about economy so economy is taught by servant sir so these are some demo videos you can watch like this an economy Welcome is to like 112 hours of uh, course friends from this class on work Hi friends my name is Sarvan Kumar I am your economic faculty welcome to Rathod's IAS friends in this class we are going to study about the gross value added what is the meaning of this gross value added now under this we have three heads basic price right factor of And next is science and technology. You can click on the video, and you can click on play button, and full screen. Welcome to Rathod IAS. Going to the DNA. That uh, kind of bank is called as a DNA data bank. So you need to create a DNA data bank at a national level. Okay, where the information of all the uh, criminals. Okay, all the suspects. Okay. So these are the number of courses that you can watch the demo videos, and after once you watch the demo videos, and after once you satisfied, so click on the buy now button, and after that you need to enter some details. Later on you can click on proceed, and you can give your mobile number and also email ID, and finally you can use this Razorpay payment system for the purchasing of these courses.